let's take it from the very top on down. Jeannie Buss stayed out of it and stayed awake. Give us her perspective on what she told you. Well, you know, Jeannie had been do doing this for the last 18 months, really, when she fired her brother and she fired Mitch Kupchak and installed Magic Johnson in that spot as president of basketball operations. This was her attempt to say, look, I tried to do it the way that I thought my dad wanted to run this franchise, right? I he thought he wanted my brother and me to try to do it. That wasn't working out. We had to change everything. And he di she did that by putting Magic Johnson in there as the president of basketball operations for this kind of moment, for this kind of recruiting period. But at that point, she had done everything she could do. And I remember talking to her and said, so what did you do the night before? What did you do the morning of? And she said, I was actually home watching Rachel Nichols on the jump, just like everybody else. <laughs> and, you know, the first part obviously didn't go well. They didn't get Paul George. I said, were you able to fall asleep? She goes, yeah, I actually fell asleep, but I woke up at four in the morning and absolutely couldn't t sleep at all. I was tossing and turning. You know, there was nothing to do but really wait for the sun to come up. She had friends coming over and spent the whole day just looking at her phone, waiting for it to buzz with some sort of news. The meeting with LeBron was actually such a secret that Jeannie knew that it was happening. A couple other people in the Lakers organization knew that it was happening. But that was it. And they were under such lock and key. Mm -hmm. There was such pressure to keep this a secret because if it leaked, that was a major violation of trust with LeBron James because he had asked to keep this process quiet. And so she spent all day looking at her phone, waiting for it to buzz. Finally, a little after five o'clock, there's a text message from Rich Paul that says, congratulations. She said she was driving her car. She had to pull over because she was so excited and said, you know, this is something my dad would have really liked. This is something that he would have wanted to accomplish. Yeah, let's go with the congrats text because Rob Palinka, right? We, we don't have a decision. <laughs> yeah. We don't have a, we don't have a uh -huh. big essay. We're getting texts with balloon emojis or something. What is this about? <laughs> You got balloons. Yeah, I think what was interesting with, with Rob Polink. I know, you know, the emoji game is pretty strong in the NBA, though, because, like, that's kind of how you convey emotion. And Rich Paul had to get in touch with a lot of people very quickly. So I think he might have, like, cut and pasted the same text. Like, I'm just <laughs> guessing, but a lot of people told me they got that same text. <laughs> the, uh, I think what's interesting with Rob and Magic, though, is that they had – one of the things that Jeannie told me about what they had done over the last year to get ready for something like this is they went into this with plan A, B, C, and D. And that was something that she was really trying to change from the previous regime where her brother Jim Buss was in charge and, and Mitch Kupchak was in charge. She said some, she went to a couple of the free agent meetings in the past and one of them, she just threw her hands up. She said they, they didn't even have a coach in place to sell the vision that they were pitching. And their answer was, well, you know, we can get in, we can, we can ask them who they want to coach. And she goes, but then what if you can't get that coach? And, uh, you know, usually as a writer, even somebody gives you a throwaway word, like anyway, you cut that word at the end. Right. But in this case, I left it because it really conveyed the, the emotion mm -hmm. that she felt, the frustration she felt at how the Lakers had been operating that needed to change. And that was why she felt eh, confident as she could be when Rob Palenka and Magic Johnson were in charge of running this with LeBron James. Now, I'm going to pause right here and say this. They were in charge of recruiting LeBron James, but LeBron James made this decision. Right. LeBron James basically has the level of power. He says, here's what I want. Are you, are you going to give this to me? Is this acceptable to you? It's not necessarily like you have to sell yourself to LeBron James. They've been selling themselves to LeBron James for 18 months, and it's all based on the actions they've been taking to reform their franchise and remake it in the way that Jeannie Buss thought it should have been. Okay. They do have a coach. And it's Luke Walton. And if it's the Waltons, there's <laughs> got to be a Grateful Dead story. And this is, thank you for my oh, life, man. Katie Mayne. This is terrific. <laughs> Listen, let's hear right? it. Well, look, Luke Walton was, you know, he was one of the people who, you know, they, they kept him a little out of the loop of this, right? He kind of had to sit back and let Rob, Rob Plink and Magic Johnson work on this. He didn't talk to LeBron James. He wasn't part of the pitch. He had, he had his pitch ready if they called on him, but. He had to sit back and wait. He said he had, a, he had a barbecue going. They were playing cornhole. His kids were out by the pool. And all of a sudden, his phone rings, and they got LeBron James. And at, at, some, at one point, he got on the phone with his dad, Bill Walton, who was at a Grateful Dead concert. <laughs> and <laughs> in the is. background is Mickey Hart, you know, the drummer. And Mickey, you know, he said he, his dad was quoting lyrics to him, and Mickey Hart jumps in <laughs> and says, you know, the rhythm is everything. And Luke goes, you know, once I figure out what that means, I'm sure mm -hmm. I'm going to – 
I mean, this is really going to help. I don't know what Conference I mean. Of champions. <laughs> but somehow, Bill Walton always has an appearance in one of these stories. And I think that what, what's interesting for Luke is, you know, they were drafted in the same year, Luke Walton and LeBron James. Now, he was a fifth-year senior, senior mm -hmm. and LeBron had come out of high school, so he's quite a bit older. But he's got experience with star players before. He played with Kobe, right? He, he's been with Phil Jackson. They've won championships. He's seen all the drama. But for the last two years, he's been leading a, a youth movement, right? He's been trying to coach the young kids. His life is about to change and I think he had you know he got advice from Eric Spolster he got advice from Kobe Bryant but I think deep down he kind of understands look this is how it's going to be when when we win it's going to be great and it's going to be wild when we lose it's going to be the end of the world we're going to be on Sports Center every night but and it's going to be fun <laughs> and there was advice from the drummer of the Grateful Dead obviously all the stuff you want to read <laughs> it's on ESPN.com right now Ramona Shelburne thanks for your time go read it it's terrific